All right, well, my name is John Schmiel, and uh, I'm from Wausau, Wisconsin. And uh, Randy flies into our airport on business quite often, and we've gotten to be friends over the years. And uh, that's how I got invited to this program. I didn't think that the room would be packed, because when you're a pilot and you go to a pilot's association meeting, you probably don't want to talk about hamburgers. Um, but I hope there's enough people here that can hear this story and take it back where they come from, because I think that uh, once you hear the story, you'll understand that um, the idea that I'm talking about here could have a great impact on aviation in Minnesota, because it is having a positive impact on aviation in Wisconsin. So um, the big question is, what is the Wisconsin Flying Hamburger Social? Um, and it's kind of a long, drawn-out story. And uh, this actually isn't my presentation. It was put together by somebody else. Um, so I, I might not have the chemistry to flow with it. So I might get a little ahead or behind. So we'll see how it goes. But anyways, it started out as a way to promote aviation in Wisconsin. Uh, my wife and I run the airport and the FBO at Wausau. And we've been there for 25 years. And we're always looking for different ways to keep people flying and to promote aviation. Before uh, we did that, we worked at the FBO up in Rhinelander, and I'm actually a second generation aviator. My father was a, a pilot, and he's an IA mechanic with his own private strip and does that. So I grew up at airports from the time I was a little kid. And um, the lucky thing about me was that I knew what I wanted to do since I was a little kid. I wanted to run an airport and run an FBO. So as I was growing up, I paid attention to the different airports that I went to and hung out at. And I brought the things that I really liked and kind of ignored the things that I didn't like. And one of the things that I've noticed that's changed in aviation is that in the 60s and 70s when I was growing up, the aviation was a social center. It wasn't just an airport. And people hung out at the airport. And they didn't have to have a mission. They didn't have to have a purpose. That was the reason when they didn't have something to do, they were pilots, or they were aircraft owners, and they went out to the airport because that's where all their friends were. Things have changed these days. In, in, nowadays at the FBO, most FBOs that you go to, pilots only, have to go, only go there when they want to fly. And they don't go out to the airport unless they have a mission. And um, you don't see people sitting on the couches uh, hangar talking much anymore. And when we took over our FBO, I wanted to change that. I wanted to make it so that our airport was a social center, not just for pilots and for airplane owners, but for kids who liked airplanes and for neighborhood people who thought that the airport was cool. And that's the kind of atmosphere that we've tried to create at our airport. And I tried to draw from all of those experiences that I had as a kid to create an atmosphere that was a social atmosphere. And that's really the heart of um, where I come from with the, from the Wisconsin Flying Hamburger Social. I'm going to get into uh, I'm going to get into the history of it, but it it works. The Wisconsin Flying Hamburger Social works. It started at Wassa, and it grew to airports around Wassa. And when other airports away from our area heard about it, they said, "We want to be involved in that too." So has anybody been, has anybody flown to Wisconsin and gone to a hamburger social there? Has anybody heard of it? Okay. Oh, good. You've heard of it. So that's good. So just in a nutshell, here's what it is. In the summer, from June to August, um, we've chosen a day, and our day is Wednesday. And on Wednesday evenings, from June to August, we've teamed up with other local airports in our area, and we pick a date that's ours. So one Wednesday, Wausau will host a, a hamburger social. The next Wednesday, Merrill Airport, just north of us, hosts the hamburger social. The Wednesday after that, it's another airport and so on. And we planned an area that would host the social. And the criteria was that a J3 Cub had to be able to leave a home airport within that area at 5 o'clock, fly to that local airport, be able to land, eat dinner in a reasonable amount of time, get back in their airplane, 
and fly back home before sunset. Okay, we didn't want to make it so that you had to own a Bonanza to be able to get to another airport and have dinner and come home. We wanted, we wanted it to be able to um, uh, be available to the slowest airplane. So um, Michigan ended up hearing about our, our program. They've got it in Michigan. And uh, we've actually heard from some airports here in Minnesota that want to do it. And I think that's one of the reasons why I came over here. Now, um, it's not just about the food. It's called the hamburger social. It's about pilots getting together and doing their thing, okay? And their thing is socializing and getting to know each other. General aviation as a group is going to be stronger if we are stronger as a unit, if we have friends. And sometimes we get enamored with our local airport, but we don't know some of the pilots from the other local airports around. And one of the things that uh, this Hamburger Social has done is it strengthened friendships and relationships with other surrounding airports. All right, so let's see here. How it all started. Well, um, so I told you that we've been here for 25 years. And I thought back to my past and I said, I remember the days when people would come out and there'd be three or four people sitting on the airport couch, couch and one of them said, hey, let's go flying. And nobody ever said, well, what are we gonna do? I'm not gonna go flying if we don't, aren't going someplace. They all said, okay. And then the, the person said, well, anybody wanna go with me? And they hopped in the airplane and they went. Sometimes it was a touch and go, doing some touch and goes. Sometimes it was go practicing some maneuvers. Sometimes it was looking at a local fire or going to a local airport. But there really wasn't a mission involved. And Bob and I, the guy in the back there who's also from my airport, we, we were used to going to a lot of airport events, but it seemed that the airport events always um, surrounded the idea of getting something to eat. You know, you have pancake breakfasts and all of that stuff. And we said, geez, you know, it'd be nice if we could just kind of concentrate on flying and not worry about the eating all the time. So we formed something called Putt Putt Club, okay? Now, what that was, it was on Wednesday nights, it was in the summertime, but it was only at Wausau. And we told the story about what it was. We just wanted everybody to come out to the airport, they all bring their own uh, lunch or dinner or whatever you want to call it in their bag. We'd all eat and talk about things and then we'd decide what we were going to go do. And they're out of, you know, we've got about 80 airplanes based at our airport. And out of those 80 airplanes, about 10 pilots understood the concept. They're like, so you want us to come out to the airport, eat a sandwich, and then just go flying for no reason at all? And some people were like, geez, that's dumb. And other people went, wow, what a cool concept. Just to go flying? That sounds great. And so it really did work out. And for about four years, that's how it went. And it started with about three or four airplanes. And at its heyday, we probably had 10 airplanes at a time. And we would go to other local airports, pretty much the ones that eventually became our branch of the uh, Wisconsin Social. So what would happen is, though, is it still became kind of ori uh, mission oriented, okay? People were like, well, where are we gonna fly tonight? And we'd say to Merrill. And well, after a couple of years, somebody, said, somebody would say, well, geez, we've already been to Merrill three times. You know, why don't we go to such and such an airport? And so what would happen is the airports got further and further away, and that eliminated some of the people that wanted to do it, and they couldn't do it anymore. And pretty much, it broke up the group after, what, about four years, Bob? So when that was done, you, you guys know airports. There's like a, I don't know, they're a dysfunctional family. You know, there's one part of the airport thinks things should be one way and the other part thinks it should be another way and sometimes they get together and sometimes they don't. Well, there was another part of the airport that was saying, hey, you guys are doing it all wrong. It should be about the food. It shouldn't be about the flying and we should just be socializing together. And so um, Bob and I didn't necessarily think that way. Um, but we said when we quit the Putt-Putt Club, we kind of said, okay, you guys think you know how to do it? Go ahead and do it. So what they did was, they had, there was a privately owned hangar on the airport, and they said, we're gonna do hamburger night. And what we're gonna do is, we're gonna um, buy a bunch of hamburgers, and there's gonna be a grill there. Nobody's gonna make the food. If you want a hamburger, you gotta grill it yourself, and we're gonna have chips and the condiments and all that stuff. And it's for the locals. 
So what happened was uh, the rest of the tea hanger tenants at the airport heard about it. And pretty soon what started out as about a, about a dozen people were coming out for hamburgers. After a couple of years, it turned out to be 40 or 50 people every Wednesday night. And as word got out, some of the pilots from some of the other local airports heard about this. They said, hey, we're going to fly down to Wausau on Wednesday and get a free hamburger. Well, here's the deal. The hamburgers weren't free. There was no charging. And they said, we're going to have a donation jar there, and people are going to um, let their conscience be their guide, and they're going to make a donation if they get a hamburger. We're not going to tell them how much to put in there. So what do you think happened? Any ideas? Anybody had to do this stuff before? Well, I can tell you what happened, OK? The majority of people that went really thought it was a really cool deal. And instead of putting two bucks in, they put more than their fair share in. They said, you know, I'm going to put five or 10 bucks in, because this is a really cool deal, and I want it to keep going. Because if the guy sponsoring it starts losing money on the deal, he's not going to want to do it anymore, right? You've seen that happen. So what do you think happened? The amount of guys that were given extra didn't make up for all the cheapskates who were, thought they were getting away with getting a free hamburger. And after about three or four years, the guys that said we were doing it wrong said, we've had enough of this. Because we're not going to um, get all this stuff ready for 50 people and come up short every week. So he said, we're not going to do this anymore. So Bob and I, Bob's on the airport uh, committee at WASA, and I, I'm also the airport manager. We said, geez, you know, this um, hamburger night's kind of put WASA on the map. It'd be nice if we could keep going, but we both said we don't want to lose money doing it, and we don't want all the labor going into it either. So he said, there's got to be a better way to do it. So we thought, OK, here's what we want to do. We're going we're gonna to do this, but, and I said to Bob, but we're not going to do it every Wednesday here. I said, you know, so-and-so's been coming from Merrill, so-and-so's been coming from Medford, and so-and-so's been coming from Stevens Point. What if we asked them if they would host uh, a hamburger night once in a while, and then we would host one, and then another airport would host one, OK? And I remember Bob going, that's a great idea, but gosh, I wonder if anybody's going to do it. So um, I called up one airport, and the guy that I called was from Marshfield, and his name was Jeff Geyer. And Wisconsin Hamburger Social wouldn't be where it is today if it wasn't for Jeff Geyer, because he's the guy that put the website together, put Facebook together, and really got the word out to everybody about how it works. And uh, I started telling Jeff what was going on and what I had hoped it would turn into. And I got about halfway into the story. And he said, stop talking, John. He said, you made your point. We're on board. So I ended up starting to call the other airports around. And pretty much I got the same uh, response from every single airport. They said, we're in. And so we got seven airports. And they all committed to uh, two Wednesdays sometime over the summer. And we decided that during Air Venture that we weren't going to do it because all the people who normally participate are going to be at Oshkosh having a good time. So that's how it started out. And um, word got out, well, first, one of the airports uh, that I called said, yeah, that sounds like a lot of work. I, I don't think we're going to do it. And it was kind of interesting because they were kind of doing something similar, but it was a lot lower key. And we were hoping that they would kind of partner with us a little bit. Well, they said, yeah, we're not going to do it. And they said, if you want, you can call the airport manager, but he doesn't want to ever do anything. Um, but you can ask him anyway. So when I called the airport manager, he said, yeah, that sounds like a great idea. Let's do it. So that's how it got started. And, and our original area was called the Central Branch. And um, there were airports north of there where uh, one of the airport managers said, hey, could you make us a stop? And it was just a little too far away. A cub could not fly there, have dinner, and come home. And we said, you know what? We can't do it. But I tell you what, if you like the idea and you like the concept, you've got a lot of airports in your area. You could try to form a branch up there. And uh, it would be separate. And he goes, well, you know, um, it, but he wanted to do it on the same day as us. And we said, you know, that's not really going to work because there are some airplanes in our branch that might want to go to your event. And there are some planes in your branch that might be capable of coming to our event. So let's do it on two different days. 
So what we decided to do was, since their area and our area were very close, we'd take Wednesdays and they'd take Thursdays. Okay, so in the first year, unintentionally, we ended up forming two branches. Then over time, after that first year, well, actually, let me tell you, the first two Wednesdays of the summer, the first year, were absolutely horrible. Um, we had a, like, a near tornado come through Wausau. We were the first place. We had a near tornado come through Wa that was forecast to come through. And I remember uh, one airplane flew in, and it was, from, uh, it was a cardinal from Green Bay. And we were looking at the radar, and we were thinking, gosh, this guy's coming here. So he like landed, he ran in, grabbed his hamburger, they all ate it down. His family hopped in the airplane, and they took off. And I think when his wheels left the ground was when the first bolt of lightning hit, and he was off to Green Bay. But listen, the fact that only one airplane came in really isn't the point. The point was that we wanted to have an event where pilots could socialize. And there were a lot of local pilots that came to our event, so it was still a great success. Okay. So then the next week was in another airport, and the weather was very similar to that. So by the time the third Wednesday came across the, third, the first year, there was a lot of pent-up frustration uh, in the hamburger social network. And uh, the third airport that was supposed to have one was Stevens Point, and they're just south of us. And the weather was forecast to be awesome. And we, uh, at Wausau, were pretty darn excited so we, uh, I think we had 15 airplanes go from Wassa to, to go down to Point. Well, we ended up going in there, and man, it, it was a furball. There were so, you couldn't believe how many airplanes were in the pattern. And uh, we got down there about, I think, 5.30, and you could barely fit in the pattern. And we all landed, and there was just a row of airplanes. And the first hamburger social that Stevens Point did, they had 42 airplanes show up for their event. They had not planned for 42 airplanes. And so like half an hour into it, they had already made two runs to the grocery store to get more supplies. And um, I got to tell you, the food was fantastic because their sponsor was actually a, a restaurant operator. So we got these A number one buns and the hamburgers were freaking awesome. And it was just a wonderful time. But, but what was really awesome about it was how everybody reacted to it. There wasn't one person there that had flown in that didn't have a smile on their face. Everybody was meeting new people, and everybody there completely got it. Now, let me explain something. There's a difference between a hamburger social and a fly-in. So if you think that this is a fly-in that you have during the week in the evening, you're wrong, because that's not what it is. It isn't necessarily about to promote your airport or to promote your FBO. The only agenda behind this is, think about it this way. On Wednesdays without a hamburger social, when you get off of work and the weather looks good, what do you want to do? Let's see, you've got to eat dinner, right? And the weather's good, so what do you want to do? Go fly? All this does is combine those two activities into one. Okay, that's all it is. And when you get to the other airport, you're seeing friends, you're sitting down with them, you're socializing, and when you're done, you get in your airplane and you go home. The event lasts from about 5 o'clock to about 7 o'clock. Seriously, the crickets start chirping at 7 o'clock because everybody's gone. That's how fast it happens. Now, if you want to use it to promote your airport, you could, but it seems like a lot of work to me. It's really about the pilots and it's about socializing. And it's not really about the menu either. This doesn't have to be some super spread. You've got to have a couple of grills. You've got to have enough meat there and buns for everybody and enough ketchup and mustard and some chips on the side and some soda. If you want to go crazy, like my wife goes crazy, and she cooks for like two days, and you can't believe the spread that she puts out. And it's really awesome. If you want to do that, you can do that. But other airports in our group, they don't do that. They might ask their EAA chapter to do a potluck and have that out there too, and then they'll have some extra hamburgers to cook on the side. So what this map here is showing you is, is after that first year, there were a lot of people, not just in our area and in the Northwoods, 
that found out about the hamburger social, but we literally had airplanes from all over Wisconsin coming to attend our events. And they said, hey, we want to do this too. So uh, what Jeff and I did was we looked at the state of Wisconsin and we said, how can we organize things so that there's enough airports in a group to where the days won't interfere with each other and we know what the groups are? Because your social is, isn't going to work if you make a poster and you put it up on your bulletin board and you call a couple of airport people and say, hey, we're having a hamburger social Wednesday night. Why don't you come on out? Do you know why that's not going to work? Come on, help me out here, people. You're, you're doing Nobody horrible. Looks Nobody looks at a bulletin board. If they haven't been in the airport for last week, they're not going to know about it. Okay? And really, the social is about flying as much as, as, it, as it is about eating. Okay? So what will happen is when you form one in your area and you say, we want to have a hamburger social, you shouldn't start planning yours first. What you should start doing first is saying what other airports are going to be in our network. And you should call those airports, explain to them what the hamburger social is, and say, do you want to be on board with this? Because if your surrounding airports aren't on board with the same date every, or with the same day of the week, every week, and how it works, if they're not on board with that, then the people from their airport aren't going to fly to your airport. And the first reaction you're going to get from people when you call them is they're going to say, wow, that sounds like a lot of work. Cooking a bunch of food for 50 to 100 people, that's a lot of work. And what we said to them is, look, it's not that much work. And if, you're, uh, if, if it feels like work, you're doing it wrong. You haven't given enough responsibility to enough different people to get it done. You really need to keep it simple. Pilots are pretty satisfied. Uh, you know, I'm not sure that we've ever seen a spam burger served. I, I don't know if that would go over really great, but you know, they're pretty satisfied with a meal. Okay, so um, my point is, is that the the way that I sold it to the other airports is, each airport has to take one Wednesday from June to August, but they could make two. All right, but that means that all the other Wednesdays. You get to fly someplace else and have dinner. And that's the key. And the only way you're going to make your hamburger social successful is if all the other airports around yours understands how the hamburger social works. Do you, do you understand my drift here? I tend to go on and on. It helps me when you like go like this and smile because then I think, okay, that person gets it. And I haven't seen anybody fall asleep yet, so I must not be doing too bad. All right, so why are there different branches? I explained that to you already. We arranged to have seven or more airports um, so there'd be an easy travel distance. And we use the Piper Cub as a criteria. And, and even an ultralight, you could think about that because they could be part of the group too. We just don't want slow airplanes to not be able to make it. Um, we designated days for each branch so they wouldn't interfere if they were next door to each other. And we wanted to have a different location every week. Um, Let's see. So who puts the socials on? OK, so when I was calling people, when I called this one airport that was negative about it, the person that I talked to, who I thought was going to be stoked, was an EAA chapter president. Because I thought, this is the kind of thing that EAA chapters do. But they weren't all that interested. Okay. What I found out was that the people who were completely interested in it were the stakeholders in the airport. So it was the airport manager that were very interested in it and it was um, and then it was the FBOs because the FBO said hey this is a way that we can get people to come to our airport that might not normally come to our airport and they can see what we do so so they were pretty stoked about it then it was pilot groups but believe it or not it ended up being other local organizations like in Three Lakes it ended up being a fundraiser for the local Kiwanis because nobody at that airport wanted to really do the food so they went to the um, Kiwanis and said, hey, would you guys do the food? And it could be a fundraiser for your organization. Incidentally, if, have any of you been to Three Lakes, Wisconsin? It's just an absolutely gorgeous grass strip on a beautiful lake in the Northwoods. They had over 60 airplanes at their, uh, at their hamburger social. It was incredible. 
Um, and then it's, it's good for anybody, the, you know, anybody willing to help can put on the social. It doesn't necessarily have to be one of those groups. So, um, all right. So we know it promotes aviation in the state and it promotes aviation at your airport. Um, but here's the deal. The idea is to keep it short and sweet. The problem with flying and fly-ins is that what I've noticed is if you decide you're going to go to a fly-in on a Saturday, that's oftentimes a full-day commitment, okay? And we got a lot of stuff packed into our lives nowadays that, we're, that aviation is competing with. And if you got kids, and like mine plays hockey, forget it on the weekends. So, and all you Minnesota people understand that, right? <laughs> we loved playing hockey in Minnesota. I just absolutely love it. Thing I love here. But anyway, if you keep it short and sweet, you're much more likely to get participants. Okay? So you really have to strive to do that, not let it drag out. But people are going to fly. But here's the cool part. So a person goes flying this Wednesday, and they go flying next Wednesday, and they go flying the Wednesday after that. Now, before Hamburger Social, that particular pilot might come out and fly this week or two weeks from now. But when they've flown three Wednesdays in a row, something really funny happens. Then they want to fly on Friday, and they want to fly on Sunday, too, because they're flying more often. They feel more proficient. They feel more comfortable in their airplane. And so what we saw, at least at my airport, was the people that were participating in the hamburger social weren't only flying more because of the hamburger social. They were flying more because they enjoyed it. They, they really liked it. And that's one of the reasons why I think flying is going down is because people aren't flying enough. And I know that sounds uh, kind of like a weird statement, but it's true. The more you fly, the more you fly, right? That's kind of zen. All right. I don't really like the term $100 hamburger um, because it's derogatory. I think, you know, um, you can go out on your motorcycle and do stuff. You can go out on your snowmobile and do stuff. And if you're going to be a bean counter, um, we could say a lot of things cost us way more money than they should. Um, flying, to me, is a quality of life issue. So I'm not going to go to a hamburger social thinking to myself, oh my goodness, I had to rent the airplane for this much, and the gas cost me that much, and blah, blah, blah. So it's just about the social. I hate to attach money to it. All right, so the food. It's all donations only. And this is important, because if you start charging for dinner, who else has to get involved? The health department does, OK? So if, you, if it's just a gathering, a social gathering of friends, that's not what has to happen. And so what we did was we just put a jar out, and it said, let your, let your conscience be your guide. And typically, have we always come out ahead, Bob? Oh. Yeah. OK, I mean, sometimes we get more, sometimes we get less. It depends on the weather right. a lot of times. I mean, if we have really good weather, we probably get way more than we normally would. And if it, the weather's bad, we might lose a little. It's called the Flying Hamburger Social, so obviously ham hamburgers are the main staple. But one of the airports around our area, there's a lot of potato farming around that airport. And so their menu really uh, was focused around uh, different potato, um, potato recipes. And I thought that was really cool. Um, another airport in the state, they had their socials on a Friday. So they said, we're not going to do hamburgers. We're going to do a fish fry. And that was really awesome. Um, so you can, do, you can put your own thumbprint or fingerprint on it. Um, and it's not really implied to be a competition, although there are some people who look at it that way. But I don't think it should be that way. What you, need, what you really need to have is you've got to have a lot more than just one grill. If you get 50 airplanes showing up, you're going to have at least 100 people there. And remember, it happens in a short period of time. If I was you, I'd have a bunch of hamburgers grilled up even before 5 o'clock because that's when people start showing up. They start showing up at 5 o'clock. Um, and you don't want to be, that's the one thing that we do different than hamburger night did is that we do prepare the food ahead of time. So the, um, the people who come don't have to flip their own burgers. But you could do it differently if you want. You've got to have tables. You've got to have chairs. You've got to have utensils, nap napkins, garbage, bathroom, all of that stuff. So it could be in a private hangar. It could be in the FBO. 
It could be in the lobby of the terminal, wherever you want to have it. The good thing is, is that if you have an EAA chapter that's putting it on, they're most likely going to have some tables and chairs, and that makes it a lot easier. It also makes it a lot easier to get volunteers to help with uh, setup and teardown. What we do at Wausau is we ask our, um, the airport sponsors a Boy Scout chapter. And so what we do is we ask the Boy Scouts to help with setup and teardown. And let me tell you, that's been huge. Isn't that right, Bob? I mean, we were almost at the point we don't want to do this anymore until those young kids came along and we're like, man, we could do this for another 30 years now. All right. So marketing. So um, what Jeff did was he put together a website. And it used to be Wisconsin Flying Hamburger Social. Now it's Flying Hamburger Social. And the reason it's Flying Hamburger Social is because we're hoping that Minnesota um, embraces the idea. And if we had Wisconsin on it, you guys might not want to do it. So it's Flying Hamburger Social. And uh, you can go on there and, and check out the website. But as soon as you decide that you want to do it and you get some airports around you, you need to get a hold of us so that we can get that in on the website and get the information out about your um, Hamburger Social. Now, like I said before, it's not a flying in the evening, so posters really don't work. But I'll tell you what really does, and that's social media. At the beginning, all we did was promote this on Facebook. That's it. But we were very consistent about how we promoted it. We probably had at least a couple of stories a day about the Flying Hamburger Social and how it worked and where it was going to be and what time it was going to be. We did that every day prior to our first season. And so the word really got out, and we asked people to share it. And that's really how it got out throughout the state. Now, what's interesting about that is, is the demographic that it impacted. Because when we started, if you look at the age group that's into flying, um, let's, let's, well, how do I want to say this? They're, they're a wiser crew, and they probably aren't all that um, uh, internet savvy, or at least they weren't three or four years ago, and they really didn't even know what Facebook was. And we thought, boy, are we really going to get that much response by just prom promoting this on social media? And what we found out was is that we attracted a whole new group of people that we had never anticipated. And that's what was really cool. And that's what really made this whole thing go. So we are on Facebook. You can go to Flying Hamburger Social, or you can go to Wisconsin Flying Hamburger Social and uh, friend it, and you'll see what's going on there. Now, with regards to promoting and planning for one, what we've told people is that we want them, the week that they're doing their hamburger social, to get on Facebook and make posts regarding theirs. Some unique features, some reasons why you might want to come to their airport, those sorts of things. And then it's important while your um, social is going on that you have somebody in your group at your airport taking some pictures and, um, and recording kind of what's going on so that after the social is over, you immediately get on uh, Facebook, at least within 24 hours, post some pictures, show people what happened, and explain how things went down at your airport. Some of the things you might want to post are how many airplanes showed up, how many people were served, how many hamburgers you bought, um, different things like that. Whether you ran short on chairs or napkins or tables or whatever. And the reason that that's important is the airport that's hosting the next week will then have a better idea of what they need to do at their airport to make their event better. So there's a, there's a before, during, and after component to promoting the hamburger social. Um, let's see here. What else do we have? Yeah. We used to put out the poster, but it doesn't work. I'm not a Twitter guy, um, but I suppose you could do the same thing through Twitter. Um, but really, the emphasis has been on um, the emphasis has been on Facebook and doing using social media to promote it. Um, you need to hype it up at your own airport, though. When you decide that you're going to do it, even if it's at another airport, if if you're the EAA chapter or you're the airport manager or the or the FBO, you really need to get on the phone or on the email or find some, some way to contact the pilots at your airport and tell them what's about to happen and why they should go flying on your night and why they should go to that airport. 
because that's the only way you're going to get people involved. Wausau consistently has 10 airplanes going to a hamburger social. Right, Bob? And uh, that's what really makes it fun. It's friends getting together in a group and going flying someplace. Um, but it's not just uh, Jeff and I that need your help. If you're going to do it, you're going to have to do it as a group of airports. That means that somebody's going to have to pick up the torch and say, this is what we're doing. And I've kind of told you how to go through the process. But what you need to do is get on the phone, call the local airports in your area, that are a cub distance away and ask them if they want to be on board and tell them the story about it. And because you need to have a branch manager, you just can't put your shingle out and say, we're having a hamburger social tonight. It won't work. We've had other airports in the state in Wisconsin that tried that and, and they fail and they're very disappointed. And what we've told them is the key is getting your surrounding airports involved. It's really the key. The other problem that we had was we had set up these areas and days of the week that they would go, and then one airport in one area said, you know what, we don't like that you gave us Thursdays. We want to do this on Wednesdays. So everybody else can do it on Thursday, but we're going to do ours on a Wednesday. Well, when that happens, the chemistry is broken because people need to know Wednesdays are hamburger nights because they're going to put it on their calendar. And they're going to say, every Wednesday, we've got some place to go. Let's do that all summer long. And that's why it becomes successful. Let's see here. Yeah, we talked about that. Here's some pictures. This is the terminal at Wassa, by the way, down here on the lower end. Um, that was up in Marshfield, I think, on the top. Um, let's see here. Yeah, we need a lot of pictures. It's important that you're graphic. You don't want to just tell a story. You need to tell it through pictures. Um, there's no cost to run it through the website. Um, that's why we made uh, Flying Hamburger Social website. It's just to promote this event. Now, it doesn't mean that you have to do things the way we're doing them in Wisconsin. I know you Minnesotans think a little different. So um, you can do it your way. But ours is kind of a shell that you can work off of. And uh, we were kind of fantasizing about what it would be like if the Hamburger Social went across the United States. And um, in fact, I had a friend of mine from Arizona say, hey, we want to do this down here. And I thought, you know, in Arizona, you're going to have to do things a lot differently. You're really not going to be able to do them in the summer because it's going to be too darn hot. And you're probably not going to be able to do them during the week because airports are so far apart. Maybe in Phoenix you could do it, but you know, down in the Southwest, they don't have the advantage that we do up here. There's just not a lot of airports in, in close uh, vicinity. So I'm not saying that if you're gonna do a social, you have to do it our way. I'm just telling you that that's how it worked out for us. And it's real easy to get a hold of me or Jeff to help you in any way you, we can. Um, one of the ways that you can get people flying is if, that, if you have a, a if you have a flight school at your airport, CFIs should be saying to their students, hey, on our uh, lesson next week on Wednesday evening, instead of you know, going out and doing stalls and slow flight and stuff, how about we do a short um, flight to another airport and have some dinner over there? And kind of show people, actually, I mean, why did we all learn how to fly? Did we learn how to fly to go out and execute tasks and maneuvers every time we went flying or to go on a mission? We went to fly to do fun stuff. And that's what the Wisconsin Hamburger or the social is supposed to be about, is to go out and have fun. And if you can take your customer with you and show them what that aviation lifestyle can be like, it's a lot more likely to motivate them to keep going. So it's a way to entice students to go on a lesson. It's a way to entice pilots to rent an airplane. And it's a way to get groups of people flying from your airport. Um, let's see. Yeah. It's also a way to introduce people to aviation. So nobody should take an airplane to another airport with an empty seat in their airplane. Um, take, some, take your neighbor, take a family member, something like that. And really, we have had people actually start flying because they were non-pilots when they went to the airport to participate in a hamburger social. They saw how fun it was, and they said, hey, I want to get in on this action. So um, obviously, it's to promote flying. And I'm not sure what else I can tell you. And I'm within my time, which if you know me and my presentations, that's absolutely a freaking miracle. So um, does anybody have a question? 
because I'd be happy to answer it. And I sure would like to see Minnesota get involved in this because I got to tell you, it's changed. It literally, it has been the one event that has changed aviation in my area. I remember when we went to um, Stevens Point that first Wednesday and uh, that huge number of airplanes showed up to their event. And even though they had to run to the store three times and get more food, the smile on everybody's face that was there was worth it. And I had guys coming to me and they said, do you know that we, get, we don't even get half this many airplanes when we have our air show every other year? So they were just stoked. And that was pretty much the story that every airport told us whenever we had an event. They were like, you know, we have our flying once a year, and if we get 20 airplanes for our flying, we're lucky. We've never had 60 airplanes on the ramp before. And um, it's, it's just a really cool thing. And what's cool about it is the pilots get it, the local airport people get it, and the non-pilots get it. And it's, and it's such a cool event that because of all the traffic that you're creating at your airport, there's locals that aren't airport people that are coming out to the airport saying, is there an air show going on? What's, what's up with all the airplanes? So it really does promote aviation. So I'll shut up. Any questions? Crickets. Yes. Okay, so, um, so like in the central branch, all right, let me see if I can pull that up here. So the central branch is located right in the middle of the state here. So what that means is, is that all the airports in the central branch that you see in that circle are in the central branch. So our night is Wednesdays. So Wausau will have the first Wednesday in June. And then Merrill will have the second Wednesday in June. And Merrill's just north of Wausau. But they're all in that central branch. So in, in the central branch, we have enough airports that if each airport takes two Wednesdays from June to August, all of the Wednesdays for that branch will be filled up except for Oshkosh, which we don't have one anyway. And, and people are able to follow easily which airport is this Wednesday? Yep, because it's all on Facebook. It's all on Facebook, and it says, you know, this, this week it's in Marshfield. Or what, I ha what, what ends up happening is, is uh, you know, the first Wednesday everybody will say, where is it next week? And so everybody will know where it's going to be. So it, it's kind of word of mouth. There is a change. Yeah. And some people have gone with the wrong one. Yeah, so, you know, but those were serious people, so it was no big deal. <laughs> um, no, because their, their airplane's fast, so that, you know they could. But anyway, but up in the Northwoods, they got a lot more airports in their area, so each of those airports only have to take one um, night a summer. Okay. Any other questions? You ever find that you bring in people from the communities that you have, and they just show up in cars? Ab yeah. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. You, you always get people from the community. And in fact, what ends up happening is, like, let's say when we host in Wausau, obviously all of our local pilots are coming out for that evening, too, even though they aren't flying someplace. So, but what ends up happening is they end up inviting friends out at the same time. Everybody eats, and then they end up taking their friends flying that evening. So it does end up being an outreach to the community. Now, our, our social was really more about the pilots and the flying community. But up in Mantuish Waters, where, um, which is in the Northwoods on Thursdays, they said, hey, we like the social idea, but we are going to use this to promote our airport. So they got with the local EAA chapter. They ended up doing Young Eagle rides that night. What else did they do, Bob? Do you remember? But I mean, they just had a whole bunch of people out there. They advertised it in a newspaper, which in hindsight, they wouldn't have done again because they they, have way they ran. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and another airport advertised it in their community. Their community came out, ran out of food before the pilots even showed up. <laughs> so that didn't go over real good. So I, I, I personally think you should keep it short, simple, sweet. Um, concentrate on the pilots, and the rest will come. It, it'll all work out. Any other questions? Has there been any arrival congestion at some of these small airports with a massive flux of pilots coming in? 
no worse than a um, Sunday pancake breakfast. It's been interesting, I will tell you that. I, you know, but I think that, that anytime you have an event at an airport, there's going to be different um, um, performance airplanes uh, using. It, it, it can get interesting. I would recommend, like at WASA, when we, we always have somebody at Unicom. So that we're always given that that's, they're not necessarily doing air traffic control, but we're keeping eyes out to make sure nothing happens. I would just throw out there that many times there's oftentimes people in the community that would love to help you with that logistics. For example, civil air patrol events, ham radio club. Um, there, if you just start asking around, there's, there's people that will be happy to take that off the plate, and it makes it a lot easier. Absolutely, and. Um, We've got people at our airport that actually like parking the airplanes. And I will tell you this, it is important to park your airplanes because most small airport GA ramps have difficulty accommodating 50 to 60 airplanes unless they're parked in a certain way. What we do is we, um, I know you people aren't into segregation and stuff, but we put the tail draggers on the grass and the trikes on the pavement and it works out really good. So I am pro segregation by the way, um, for airplanes. Okay, anything else? All right, well, hopefully I've planted a seed in you. Um, June's coming up here pretty soon. Remember that if you decide you're gonna do one at your airport, my first suggestion is that you get the other airports in your area involved. If you can do that, I guarantee this will be successful and you can't believe the chemistry that it creates. I've done a lot of different promotions in my day in aviation to try to promote the airport and flying and what we do. This by far, in my opinion, has been the most, the one most successful thing that we've done. And it really puts a smile on everybody's face. Thanks for the opportunity to let you know the story.